quadratic equations. Recall that a quadratic equation is of the form y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all constants and a does not equal zero. If a were equal to zero, the quadratic equation would simplify to a linear equation and this isn't what we're interested in. Quadratic equation can show one of two things. It shows a variable that increases up to some maximum value then decreases, in other words, an upside down u, or it can show a variable that decreases down to some minimum and then increases, in other words, a u. We use quadratic functions to represent demand and supply and for total revenue and profit. We also use it to show things like the Laffer curve, the Kuznets curve, which shows a relationship between a measure of inequality and GDP per capita, and the environmental Kuznets curve, which shows a relationship between some pollution measure and income per person or income per capita. So let's break apart this form. Y is equal to AX squared plus BX plus C. Y, of course, is the dependent variable and the x's are the independent variable. They show up twice in most cases. C is the vertical intercept. So when we set x equal to zero, we get that maximum value of y, that y-intercept, and that is C. All of these are examples of quadratic equations. So when y is equal to 2x squared plus 10x minus four, the a is equal to two, b is equal to 10, and c is equal to negative four. For this total revenue function, tr, is equal to aq minus bq squared, the a value is equal to negative b, the b value is equal to a, and there's no constant, so c is equal to zero. And then in this quadratic demand function, p is equal, or I should say quadratic inverse demand function, p is equal to 100 minus 4q squared minus 1 half q, we have that the a value is negative 4, the b value is equal to negative 1 half, and that constant c is equal to 100. The shape of the quadratic function and where it lies on the coordinate system depends on these values of a, b, and c. That's why I went through a bunch of examples on how to find them or how to identify them, and it just takes practice. The point is, is that it's important that you be able to identify a, B, and C values of a quadratic equation. Quiz yourself. In each of the following quadratic equations, determine the values for A, B, and C. Pause the video and try this yourself before moving on. So for the first one, we have Y is equal to 3X squared minus 25 minus 1 half X. So the A value is gonna be that coefficient that's in front of the x squared. So a is three. B is going to be the coefficient that's in front of just the x. That's negative one half. And then c is the constant. That's easy to remember. C is a constant. C here is negative 25. In the second equation, y is equal to 50x squared plus 10. The a value is 50. That's the coefficient in front of the x squared. B is equal to zero in this case because there is no value of x other than the x squared, and then the constant is 10. In the third equation, pi, or profit, is equal to 100q minus q squared minus 10. The a value here is negative one, the b value is 100, and the c value is negative 10. And then finally, this quadratic demand function, inverse demand function, the a value is negative b, the b value is negative one, and the c value is equal to a. So it's really important that you can identify the A values, the B values, and the C values. This is for graphing and for solving quadratic equations and quadratic equilibria. We know that sketching a line, a straight line, involves finding just two points and connecting them. And I like to find the vertical and horizontal intercepts, but all it really takes is just two points. Now, quadratic functions are curves, they're nonlinear, so we can't actually do that. For example, suppose you're given an equation y is equal to 16 minus x squared. You know that this is nonlinear, but you say, I'm just going to find two points and connect them. For example, when x is 0, this equation tells me that y is 16, and when x is 4, a solution, one solution for y is 0. So you graph these two points out and you draw a straight line through them. But if you were to create a big table of ordered pairs, a bunch of different ordered pairs, 
and connect the dots, you would find that the actual shape of this graph looks like this. But, you know, it's incredibly tedious to create a table of ordered pairs for any nonlinear function. So instead, follow these steps to sketch a quadratic function when you're given one. First, define or identify the a, b, and c values based on the given equation. Then we can use that a value to determine the basic shape. That a value tells us a lot. If a is positive, then we know that our parabola is a u. It's u-shaped. If a is less than zero, then we're going to have a parabola that's downward facing. It's an upside down u. And another thing to note is that the larger is the absolute value of a, the narrower the parabola is going to be. And I put parentheses optional here because we're not going to go through this in the examples. It's just, you know, sort of something extra to know. Third, determine the y-intercept, which is also known as the vertical intercept. Four, determine the x-intercept or inter intercepts, if any. And I put a star here to denote that this is probably going to take the most time because it's not going to be as straightforward as finding the x-intercept on a linear equation. If we want to determine the x-intercepts or intercept, if any exists, we have to use a quadratic formula, which is given by this formula here. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And then you divide all that by 2a. And then if you want, you can determine the maximum or minimum. We're not going to do this uh, in the class. But if you wanted to, when a is greater than 0, we know that the shape of the parabola is a u, so the minimum is going to occur at the ordered pair negative b over 2a, c minus b squared over 4a. And if a is less than 0, so that the parabola looks like an upside down u, we know there's a maximum. And the ordered pair is the same, negative b over 2a, c minus b squared over 4a. So that ordered pair is the same. Uh, whether it's a maximum or minimum, we just need to know whether it's a max or minimum based on the value of a. All right, so the best way to learn this is just by going through examples. So let's graph a quadratic inverse demand curve. It's already in inverse form. Um, so we have p is equal to the negative q squared minus 5q plus 52. So the first thing we want to do is define those a, b, and c values based on the given equation. We have that a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to 52. It's important to remember those negatives. Two, determine the basic shape by looking at the a value. So I know that a is equal to negative 1, and negative 1 is less than 0. So I can say up front that this is going to be an upside down u. It's going to be a downward facing parabola. And then three, determine the y-intercept, i.e. that vertical intercept. So the vertical intercept is always going to be c, which is 52. If you forget what that is, if you forget that the y-intercept is c, you can figure it out on your own. The y-intercept is just the value of y when that x is 0. So in this case, the y-intercept can be found by substituting in 0 for quantity demanded. And you come up with 52. So the first three steps are really straightforward. The fourth step is determine the x-intercept or intercepts if any. So what exactly does this mean intuitively? In this case, we have a parabola that has two horizontal intercepts. So this curve crosses the x-intercept twice. That's all this means. We can have a scenario where the parabola only has one horizontal intercept. In this example, it's at the origin, but it can be anywhere. It can almost lay on top of the origin, or I'm sorry, on top of the x-axis. And we may also have a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So in this case, this parab parabola crosses the y-axis, but never the x-axis. Now, in order to determine if x-intercepts exist and how many there are, we have to use the quadratic formula. And again, you don't have to memorize this, um, but this is the formula for it. And this part in here, this b squared minus 4ac, this is what lets us know how many horizontal intercepts some of you are may be familiar with this, they're also called roots, uh, that'll let us know how many there are. If this value in the square root brackets is less than zero, then there are no horizontal intercepts. You can't take a square root of a negative number 
if the number inside the brackets, square root brackets, is zero, there's one horizontal intercept. And if it's greater than positive, there will be two horizontal intercepts. So we know that a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to negative 5, and c is equal to 52. I've already identified this, so I'm just going to plug these values into the formula. And I come up with the following once I simplify. I get that x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 233 divided by negative 2. So I know I'm going to get two solutions for this because it's positive. So in my first one, I'm going to do the addition part. I get x is equal to negative 10.13, so one horizontal intercept. One of the horizontal intercepts is negative 10.130, 0, that would be the ordered pair. And then the other one, I'm going to use that minus, so it's going to be 5 minus the square root of 233 divided by negative 2, and I get a positive 5.13. So my second, my second horizontal intercept is going to occur at the ordered pair, 5.13 comma 0. So let's recap what we learned by following these steps. The vertical intercept is 0, 52. So I'm going to mark that down on my graph. And notice that because I'm working with, with a demand curve, quantities and prices can only be in positive terms. Um, so this is why I'm working with quadrant 1 only. I know that the parabola is an upside down U shape. And I know that the horizontal intercepts occur at these two values based on the quadratic formula now. Since we're only dealing with positive values of quantity, that x value, I'm going to actually ignore that first horizontal intercept, that negative 10.13. I'm not going to graph it. It's, it's not part of economic theory that, quantity, that quantities are zero, so I can ignore it. So I'm going to focus on this second one, the second horizontal intercept, which is 5.13. I'm not going to draw a straight line because I know that this is a parabola and I know that it's curved. So here's my demand curve. Quiz yourself. Sketch the inverse supply curve p is equal to 2q squared plus 10q plus 10. As a reminder, here are the basic steps. You're going to define a, b, and c based on this equation. You're going to determine the basic shape by looking at the a value. This will help you figure out if, oh, I did something wrong with my math. 3. Determine that y-intercept, the vertical intercept. And 4. Determine the x-intercept, if any, using the quadratic formula. Pause the video, write this stuff down, and try it on your own before moving on. Alright, so let's start with 1, 2, and 3. These steps are straightforward. Based on the equation, A is identified as 2, B is identified as 10, and NC is identified as 10. As far as the basic shape, what am I expecting to get out of this? I see that A is equal to 10, which is greater than 0, so I know that my curve is going to be U-shaped. I'm going to determine the y-intercept, i.e. the vertical intercept, and this is going to be equal to 10. Now let's determine the x-intercepts. This is where I have to use a quadratic formula. I'm going to sub in what I know for a, b, and c into the formula. And I come up with negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 20 divided by 4. And because that 20 is positive, I know I should come out with two solutions. In other words, the supply curve should cross the horizontal axis at two points. So for my first one, oops, for my first one, I get negative 1.38. And for the second root um, or horizontal intercept, I get negative 3.62. All right, so finally, let's just recap what we know. I know that the vertical intercept is 0, 10. That's where my supply curve is going to cross the y-axis. The parabola is going to be u-shaped. But my horizontal intercepts actually occur at two negative values of q, at negative 1.38 and negative 3.62. And since we're only dealing with positive values of q, we can, we can ignore both of these horizontal intercepts. So. I've graphed here that demand curve from the previous example, and this is what your supply curve sh should look like. So I'd just like to say that that second point there, that the parabola is U-shaped, if you were to continue graphing this supply curve for negative values of Q, you would definitely get a U-shape. But we're only focused on this quadrant 1. That's why we don't see the U right here, right now.